all right cool seems like we can we can go uh what's up guys um it's triple j here and welcome to the video um you know today's video is really all about that one thing that you need to understand before you even think about starting a business um this this one thing um that we're going to cover today is is literally one of the first things i learned um, three years ago, it was it was literally one of my mentors. I had the privilege to meet in person. Um, he was like, "Look, I know you're thinking about you know what you should be doing with your life, and um, you know while you're busy figuring out your stuff, I was still at college um, back then, but I'm studying a a general business degree. But he was like, "Okay, well while you're figuring your stuff out, and and, and if you're you know going to finish this degree or not." Um, learn this thing first. And it was simply um, money. What is it? Where does it come from? What is it used for? And its actual purpose in society. And this was super important for, for me to, to really dig, dig deep into. It's like I really, I spent like three months just, just studying like money, so like um, everything, you know, um, that you can do with it right um and its limitations and really my whole mindset changed there um and it's super important for me to make this video because i was literally thinking um today i i, I spoke to someone and he was asking me okay uh, because people know that I'm uh, my my first introduction to uh, to business was through the financial uh, well rather the financial sector uh, led me to more uh, different types of business um, and he was asking me you know what do you think um, I should do um, you know do you have any advice for me uh, because he was he finished a, a degree in economics and he didn't have a job um, and he wanted to make some money. So this is literally the thing I told him to do. And I, that's why I decided to make this video is, is to really touch on these pinpoints. Now, um, I started to, well, this little document here, I started to put out that money is nothing but paper and digits. It's a form of exchange. Now, I, I started this off because a lot of people have this view um, around money and they simply just don't know what it is, right? And they, they've they received money from someone, they, they've maybe earned some money, but they have no idea what its sole purpose is or what, you know, where it roots from. And without knowing these things, you're really left in the dust having this old um principle this old belief about money stuck dictating the way that you spend money dictating the way that you think about it you know these are all limiting things that will prohibit you from either making more money or it will maybe you know it could prohibit you from losing a bunch of money once you understand this right so um why you're broke or why you can't get everything you want right for an example, money is solely a tool. And you guys can see here, I put here, money is the key. Money is solely a tool that will make you more of what and who you currently are. Money does not make you evil. Um, money does not like, it, it could, you know, push you towards greed, definitely. But it simply is not the thing that makes you evil. Too much of it, for an example, can lead you down a different path. Too little of it can lead you down a different path. Now, I had one mentor that also told me that um, money, a lack of money is the root of all evil. Not an, like not the abundance factor of it, because once you have more of it, you can simply put that money to work and they can bring like little soldiers back um, that go to work. And this process can like, you know, wash, rinse and repeat. And once you understand this, you understand that the money that you earn from maybe you work a job or maybe you run a business, but that money that you earn, you should be allocating that into assets that, you know, produce, like I just said, um, a little, you send out your, your troops, your money, you send out your troops and they bring more troops back. So that should be, in my opinion, the goal 
of your capital allocation, the way that you see money, think about money, use money, invest money, all of this is super, super important. So money um, is an interesting subject and we, we need it as much as oxygen, um, but nobody wants to talk about it, right? Now, especially where I'm from, um, there was never really a lot of talk about money and, and I understand why, right? Um, I, I, don't, I don't neglect anything I've been through. I'm super grateful for everything I've been through, but there was just no talk about money really because money was always in, um, uh, not an abundant um, source, right? There was, there was always a sense of lack um, needing to save for something, for an example, right? Um, if you wanted X, okay, you needed to wait, save, um, and then you can buy it. But the point being is I never got educated on money, essentially. Um, and that's why it's a big part of my purpose. It's not only to help people make better decisions in their general life that will lead to a better um, and a more fulfilled life, but to help people break their beliefs um, about how they see money and how they literally view it in the world, um, its sole purpose, and um, really to help you understand that there is so much more um, for you and for your life. Um, and that's exactly why we're here. And that's why I'm making this video. So um, before I dive into this um, next piece that I wrote out here, I just want to ask you to leave all your opinions and your judgments of whatever experience you've had with money, leave it at the door. Because I'm, I simply need someone with an open mind. Um, I need you to be open-minded about it and think a little bit more uh, radical about things today because I, I like doing that. So um, bear with me um, and let's get right to it. So you need to go back and understand where money roots from, you know, why it's important and how you should view it, these things that I've mentioned. Now, um, first, it was used as a form of trade, right? We, as hunter-gatherers, we needed to figure out how to um, simply... Here, here's an example. I, I had a hat, right? I had a cool hat, and you had some fishes. I had a family to feed, and you were an, a single person, but you're a fisherman, right? And now I see you have this basket of fish, and I was like, okay, um, I want five of your fish, so I can feed my family. So what do you want? Um, and he's like, hmm, okay, well, maybe that hat, that hat is really cool. So then I was like, okay, you know what? We need to eat. I'll give you this hat. I'll get another one somehow. And then simply we had this trade. If you thought it was of equal value and I thought it was of equal value, we would then have an exchange, right? So this is how that whole thing got started, but it was super hard to really uh, you know, keep track of your IOUs. So people then later installed <clears throat> the form of like using whale. Um, I think I put it here, <clears throat> not not to miss it. Um, keeping tabs was hard. Okay, the bigger the community, the harder the accounting for like keeping tabs of the IOUs. Um, okay, simply they used um, a form of whale teeth to to track um, these IOUs. But I, as I just stated here, the bigger the community, the harder it was um, to keep track of these things. And you just did not like know at the end of the day um, who you are, you know, in depth to unless you knew the person like personally. Sorry, I, I just need to fix this. Anyways, so um, that kind of like had this little thing, right? And along came, you know, metal money, simply easy to carry and transfer between two entities. Um, you know, kings and people of power, governments, they simply, you know, stamped whatever the, the king's face was, was onto the coin. Um, and coins, essentially gold or metal, silver metal was, was easily transferable within people. It wasn't heavy to carry. Um, if you had the metal coins and it was super easy to give someone a bunch of metal coins um, and carry it around with you and stuff. So there was a lot of um, value then derived off of that. Um, and then obviously it was connected to the gold standard and that's a whole nother thing for, for another video. But um, super important to, to understand that where it roots from. I'm just, just a quick little overview. So I'll separate this in two parts. 
Uh, the first will focus on uh, business owners, and the second will be all about you know personal side of things, your personal finance. So, the reason why I think I can make this video isn't just because you know I read a bunch of books on finance. Now, however, I I've done this in the past, but these are some things that I've learned throughout the three years um, in being um, one engaged in the financial markets and two, being engaged in creating my own business um, in the form of self-built systems um, and really learning, not only having the, the, um, the book knowledge, quote unquote, but actually seeing how and feeling and experiencing this stuff. Um, it, like it's different, you know, knowing one thing and fully experiencing that thing, you know? Um, so that's why I'm literally making this video. So, you know, it's not because I just want to regulate information. Um, it's because I'm actually having really cool breakthroughs um, and, you know, these little aha moments. And you'll have them um, in whatever field you are. If you've been studying a, a lot about it and, and you have that cool little breakthrough, it's really cool to journal these things. Um, I still do. I don't journal as much as I used to, but I, I, I still do journal and have like weekly overviews. So I'm um, discovering stuff from personal experiencing as I build my business is what I just said. So a quick background, basically, I started my entrepreneurial journey, right? In 2020, I, I really wrote this quick. So um, I, I do believe everything is accurate, right? But anyways, I started my entrepreneurial journey in 2020, which is a really quick overview. And I dropped out of college. I was studying a, a general business degree, um, a BCom in strategic management. And um, I simply was doing a lot of self-work on myself, doing a lot of thinking work about what it is I truly want to do with my time on this earth. And it hit me there and then that I was not going to work for someone. OK, um, and I needed to figure this shit out. Right. And I wanted to go fully in, put allocate all my time towards figuring this stuff out and allocate every little resource that I had at my disposal at the moment to to growing not only my 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 physical well my mind but my my whole physical being um towards the person that i that it is that i need to become in order to do certain things um and that's also what this video roots around right so um I've never seen anyone achieve anything great doing a part time i i you always see a lot of people um, being out there being like, yeah, I created this, this business and this business, and I was doing this. Um, in my opinion, those are simply all illusions. Um, if you look at energy expenditure, right? I want to quickly draw this on here because i got the red book of truth and justice here in front of me. So I'm going to quickly draw something. If you look at energy expenditure, right? So here we have two pools of energy. I'm just going to write E for energy. You guys will understand. Um, one is a sequential person that is trying to run 15 different businesses. One, two, three, four, or do 15 different activities in, in one day, right? And the other one is a, simply a person that allocates um, a lot of more direct focus work into um, a direction. Now, it simply looks like this. I learned this from uh, a mentor of mine as well. I don't know if you can see this. I'm trying to bring it a little bit closer. I don't know if it's going to focus. Come on, dude. Come on, come on, dude. Um, so let me try to bring it even more closer. But you can kind of see there. One has a lot of like tentacles and the other one is a straight line. Um, you can see it from afar, right? Okay, cool. So basically what this means is that your focus is finite. Um, you only have a finite amount of decisions you can make, uh, of good decisions you can make per day. That's why you will see a lot of billionaires. They will simply wear the same clothes every single day. Now, I'm not like I tend to lean towards the side of wearing a lot of like simplistic clothing and the same stuff for my training. Um, I have like this, like a bunch of outfits I wear for training and, at the gym, for an example. But like these things, they also take away your power of making good decisions. If you waste time, for an example, on d 
deciding what you want to eat every single day, deciding what you need to buy because you don't know, or you simply just don't have a routine and you and you are struggling with all these things, right? It, it takes what you need to wear every single day. If you just pack that shit out the, the day before, you'll be good, man. You can just put that stuff on and go. Um, anyways, uh, before I go on that tangent, um, so go all in or go home is a point I want to make in here. If you're not really willing to go all in or go home, then I simply got news for you. You will be trying start and stop and start and stop and, and you'll never simply get the momentum you need or the momentum that you know you can create in your life. So I'm now three months in building cell systems and well, three to four months, dependable on how you see it. But um, it took me around three years of different studying from different people, learning from different mentors, um, experiencing in different fields to really um, identify a business model uh, and a business that I know I am called to do. Um, that's really also a different video, um, but I will make a video about that if you guys really want to figure out your own process and figuring this stuff out. Um, it's a it's a dense deep process that I simply went through, but it is something everyone can can kind of like have that ping um, moment, and that's really fun from there. It's 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 hard as shit. Don't get me wrong, but it's fun as shit to build stuff, and and that's what I like doing. Um, I like to build companies and people. I realized that like 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 I just, I had one of those moments. So. Um, all right, so definition of broke, not having the freedom with your dollar. For an example, um, you simply can't go on vacation when you want to go on vacation, right? You might still be working a job and you might still have some money. But if you, in my opinion, cannot go where you want to go on your own time, whenever you feel like it, you do not, you're not free, right? But essentially, you like the definition of broke is not having the freedom to do with what you want with your dollar it might have too little of it um that you're not able to allocate it differently or put it to work so we must then focus on creating a surplus right um and then i put here having to think twice about spending your dollar not having freedom to experience life i still think there I, I still for example think three times before i spend large amounts of money um but not you know kind of like in a scarce way of thinking where I look at the price tag every single time. Now, obviously, I'm going to say this like this. I, sa I said here that I don't look at the price tag every single time for certain items, right? But if it comes to you buying a bunch of clothes and you're just, just not even looking at the price tag, you're going to get a really um, nice little at the end when you, when you get to the till. So don't be stupid, right? Like, if you like, there's another thing I also live by. If you can't buy the thing three times, right? You cannot afford the thing. Then you just leave it, right? It's all about thinking. I put it downstairs and we'll get there. It's all about thinking about first, second, and third order consequences with your thinking. This is something I learned from Ray Dalio um, uh, when I read the book Principles uh, about a year and a half ago. Still one of my favorite books. If you guys have not yet dug into that shit, get to it. Like it, it has changed a lot of my perspective. So first, second, and third order principles is simply identifying um, the thing, the activity, whatever it is that you want to go do. Let's say for an example, you want a new TV, right? So you hop out, you go, you say, okay, damn, this TV is about like, it's about $5,000 for this TV. Can I afford it? You'd be like, eh. Yeah, man. Yeah, I can do. I can get it on credit or whatever you think you're going to do. So you go out, you get this TV uh, um, and you use money that's not yours in this example. Right now you have to pay back that money. But the first thing that you have to do on a physical thing is you now have to spend time watching that TV. You, you now spend time. This is now the first, second and third order consequences as it goes. Right. First, you, you spend money that you don't have Two is now you have to allocate time towards watching that TV. What happens now is the time that you spend allocated towards the TV gets taken away from you working on yourself or on your business. Now, this also then leads to you becoming bored. And when people are bored, they need to keep their hands and their mouths busy. That's why you see a lot of people on smoke breaks. They'll have a smoke, right? 
Um, no, it's not the main reason why people smoke, but it's one of the, they keep their hands and their mouth busy. I, for an example, chew a lot of gum. It, um, it's something I like doing. I keep my, my, my mouth busy. Um, and that's just what it is. It's, I, I prefer to chew gum than to smoke. But anyways, now your health deteriorates because you're now needing, needing to either smoke or you're, you're needing to eat stuff. I'm smoking is pushed aside here. You needing to eat stuff, keep your hands busy. That's just an example of that. So you always need to think about the opportunity cost involved in your decision making. If you're deciding between doing something with your life, for an example, what you want to fully pursue, then you need to think about the opportunity cost. And I didn't put it here, but you need to think about the scalability in your decision making of whatever it is that you're stepping into, right? Um, but you cannot know without putting your feet in the water. So um, reasons why business owners are broke, okay? So it's because a lot of business owners think very, very small, narrow-minded about not only their business, but the way that they solve problems. There are only many times problems don't get solved. They simply, you know, you simply get you simply get better at identifying the problems that needs solving. And a lot of the times, like I just said, problems don't get solved. Um, but you need to be able to identify these things. And the way of thinking bigger about things is if you, for an example, say that I want to make a thousand dollars extra per month and then I'll be good. Once you make that thousand dollars and you're still good, then be good, bro. But if you realize that there is more to it for you, you realize that your potential within your own business is more, then you'll start to kind of have this awakening in your own consciousness and be like, hey, look, maybe I, I need to start asking myself, okay, how can I take that thousand and make two thousand? How can I take that thousand and make a thousand five hundred, right? Just a little bit more, but essentially you need to start thinking bigger, at bigger numbers. You know, you need to start looking at people. Um, I almost wanted to give a really good example here, but like um, he's just someone I look up to, but I'm, I'm not going to mention his name here. But long story short, um, you need to look at people that live a very lavish lifestyle or you look at billionaires that have built exceptional businesses and you just see all that, uh, that potential, man. It's just like this fire inside of me that just wants to come out. Um, so basically, you pick the wrong game. Um, I've posted some time last year on my Instagram. It's all about long-term games with long-term players. Um and it's all about picking games that you can play um, that is not like work for you, but like in the long term, it is work for you every single day, right? So that's what will allow you to stay in the game. And that's what will allow you to get really good at playing your game because it's, it's play for you. It's not work. So now the other thing is um, attention, right? People are not really good at either getting eyeballs, gathering attention, because there's no content being put out, there's no form of an outreach being do, done to, to new possible prospects. Um, and also, or they don't simply run any paid advertisement. Now, however, you don't need to run paid advertisement to make money online, but um, that's a fallacy that's also for another video. But um, yeah, so those are, those are a couple of things that, that possibly leading to it, right? Now, some of the expectations here, um, the probability to win the lottery, big prize, you know, um, if you want to be like, do you want to be the only one that wins the lottery in like the US and you can read here, you have like a 2.9, um, 2.201,33 probability of becoming a billionaire in the US, right? Um, now, the fractal... Um, nature of that I'm not sure but point being is that there is a finite a small number amount of people who actually make it to billionaire status but the way that you get there is to figuring out a game that you can play better than anyone else and just play it every single day it's like seeing life as a game of of you needing to beat the boss it's really what it is um, and there will be new bosses in every single new level that you hit and you cannot be doing the same stuff that you beat level two boss if you want to be beaten level five boss, right? 
So there are different ways of thinking, different ways of acting, different habits that you need to formulate. So um, that's super, super important, right? Now, another thing in here, well, let me just finish this is I, have you ever felt bad for like not becoming wealthy after buying a lottery ticket, right? Have you ever, like, I've never personally bought a lottery ticket, but the point being is like, everyone has a desire to be affluent uh, to live an affluent life right now that is something not that no one i don't care who says what about sh like shit. i don't care look at like if you tell me that you're okay being broke then there's something wrong with your mind there's something like just don't 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 say that bro i mean like that's not the truth so um they don't understand the expectations affecting their perspective on their performance all right now i'll put here short term versus long term thinking right um and also first second third order principles so you if you can make a, a decision that will leave you in a shitter position today but it will benefit you 5 10 20 30 years down the pipeline i would make that decision any day of this um life that we live right so now we have capital allocation. You have employees and yourself. The way that you manage your money, the way, if you have never ever looked at your, your burn rate, right? If you can figure out how to keep your burn rate lower than the amount of money that you're making, or let's say you're not making money and you have some sort of, um, like uh, I called it, uh, well, essentially care package money that someone gives you, Either your parents gives you an allowance or you are working a job that you're making a little bit of coin, whatever the situation may be. If you can realize that if you can keep your burn rate lower um, than the amount of money that you're receiving, then you will be able to have money to put to work, right? Not essentially Dave Ramsey method of like save, 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 save until you're 60 and then be a millionaire. That's not what we want to do here, right? Um, that's not what we want to do here. No, thank you. So, um, the point being is that, um, I want to make my point though. The point being is that the, um, if you have never looked at your money, if you have not yet made it a routine to look at your money every single week, look at where it's going, look at who's bringing money in your life. Maybe there's no one bringing money into your life. Then you need to start figuring that out, but then look at how you're burning your money. Look at what you're buying. You know, look at simply all of these things. You have that panic number. I can guarantee you that you'll have a panic number in your bank account where you're like, okay, it's like two weeks, right? Two weeks are left. I still need to buy food. I still need to pay my gym. I still need to do X, Y. I need to, I still need to do Y. Um, and then you'd be like, okay, then you all of a sudden find ways to make money all of a sudden, right? Cause now you need to eat. Uh huh. So <clears throat> don't ever let that hunger die. So bad decision makers, right? The, the better decision you can make in your life, the better the overall quality of your life and the better you'll be able to not only look after yourself, but the people around you. And that's simply what we want to do here. That's simply what we strive for at self build It's not only to make one person rich, but to help the collective understand that there is more for us on this planet than just getting by. So guys, um this has been fun making this training um definitely will be making more of these trainings to share with you guys um if you guys did enjoy the video please leave a like please leave a comment in the comment section below um and i will see you guys in the next video peace